You have got to love a wrestling comeback. Even if somebody leaves the industry under a cloud of darkness, there's always a chance they could return because sports entertainment is crazy. Some have truly been amazing, though, to the point your jaw goes through the floor, whatever that means. So I am Simon from What Culture. Please do subscribe. And this is the 10 most unthinkable comebacks in wrestling history. Number 10, Cody Rhodes returns to WWE. So some bald idiot said this would never happen. Who's that guy? It wasn't as if WWE wouldn't have wanted Cody Rhodes, but he was just so embedded in the fabric of AEW, it seemed like he was there for life. Then 2022 arrived and it all changed. Rumors started to swell that the American Nightmare was thinking about jumping ship, although nobody believed it. And then boom, Rhodes and Tony Khan released a joint press release and it was done. Even then, few thought the WWE comeback could be on the cards because do not forget how Cody left. He demanded his release in 2016 after the company didn't see him in the same light he saw himself. So he bet on himself, transformed himself into a bigger star, and had one of the best debuts at WrestleMania 38. Or re-debuts, I suppose. No one can argue this wasn't the right call as Rhodes will likely be the world champion soon, which was always his goal. Oh, this is so damn inspiring. What a dude. Number nine, Edge comes back from retirement because it was never meant to happen. Edge had retired in 2011 due to injury and it was so bad he had only just defended his world heavyweight title at WrestleMania. As soon as the WWE realized that he was hurt, we were done. It was crazy. When Adam Copeland did do appearances too, the rule was he was on the no touch list. And given that the rated R superstar would go on to smash it as acting, most of us shrugged our shoulders and just assumed it was over. As ever, there was always rumors that maybe, just maybe, he could come back to the Royal Rumble, though Edge always denied them. And then at the 2020 30-man over-the-top rope elimination match, that Alter Bridge riff hit, and he was back. It was kind of hilarious as the production team missed Edge's first spear, but we don't need to worry about that. Smile about the amazing reaction and feel all warm and fuzzy in your tum-tum about how happy Mr. Copeland was really was lovely. Number eight, Shane McMahon returns to WWE. I will never forget this for two reasons. One, I had Raw on in the background while making my breakfast when here comes the money boomed out to the point I almost dropped my eggs. And two, I had jokingly predicted this the same week. It was on a video game podcast where we often just took over talking about wrestling. And I said that Shane would surprise us all. And then he did. So who wants the lottery numbers? It was such a shock because McMahon Jr. had been on the outs for so long, it felt like we were done. And then without even a peep, he was back to a monster reaction. People loved it. It did tie into that nonsense with The Undertaker at WrestleMania and the lockbox, but once again, forget about that. If you just focus on this 2016 Raw, it is so good. It really did feel like a moment in time. Number seven, Goldberg returns to WWE. And this one was never meant to happen either. When Bill Goldberg and WWE parted ways after round one, they both agreed it hadn't gone very well. Neither were fond of each other as they saw the Goldberg character in different ways. And let's face it, that 2003 run wasn't that great. It was just a bit weird. The company word was always to take shots at Bill in the interim too. And then kapow! As we were leading to the 2016 Survivor Series, we learned that Brock Lesnar wanted his WrestleMania 20 rematch, and that was mad. It then got really good because clearly Vince McMahon had decided to let Goldberg be Goldberg, as he arrived and smashed Lesnar in less than two minutes, and it led to that awesome Mania 33 match, which is one of the best five-minute fights ever. Trust me, though, when this became apparent, so many fans were scratching their heads never meant to be on the cards. Number six, Triple H returns to the throne. Do not forget that there was a period of time very recently where it felt like Triple H would never come back. He had gone through a horrible health scare and nothing is more important than that. And it was a huge shame because I'm all sure we wanted one last match. It was never going to be worth it, but still. Through a mad chain of events though, Paul Levesque did recover, found his way back into the fold when the Vince McMahon scandal happened and none other than the game was put in charge so damn fast. He quickly rehired some fired faces and switched back NXT. It was almost like we were living in an alternative reality. This is why you can never expect anything in wrestling. As we now know, this may be short-lived because McMahon is back too, but still, you have got to call this an unexpected comeback. Few people have battled back to such a degree. Number five, Ultimate Warrior returns to WWE. Another mad one because everybody here hated each other. For after falling out and falling out and falling out, the Ultimate Warrior and Vince McMahon were not friends, especially as even when they were working together, they didn't really get on. Jim Helwig would apparently always throw his toys out the pram and get suspended constantly. 
mean, it was a mess. As Triple H started to get more power, however, he decided such faces needed to be associated with the company. And after the Ultimate One got involved with the video game, it wasn't too long before he shook Vince's hand and he was back in WWE. Wild. The chain of events after this are terrifying because 24 hours following appearance on Raw, the Ultimate Warrior passed away is what led to the Warrior Award being created for the Hall of Fame. Given his relationship throughout the years and his controversial comments that have no place in society, I'm not sure if any of this was on the cards. I'm still kind of shocked that they pulled it off to start with. Number four, Bruno San Martino enters the WWE Hall of Fame. And speaking of that Hall of Fame, my word. While lots of people have plenty of comments about WWE's entry system to this, Bruno San Martino should be in every single one that exists. His plaudits are unrivaled and his WWWF title runs are legendary. They will never be beaten. For one reason or another though, Bruno and Vince did not see eye to eye, which led to decades of animosity and taking shots at each other. This was so bad when the pair on a talk show together, San Martino promised to wallop McMahon if they were sat next to each other. Rut row. And then Triple H did his thing. I still don't get what that was short of waving a magic wand, but he went to Bruno, promised him things would be different to the point he got his nod in 2013. It's very much deserved. San Martino passed away a few years after this, and I think it's important it did all go down. But do not underestimate the hate here. It was voodoo that the wounds were even able to be repaired. Number three, superstar Billy Graham returns to WWE. I mean, just copy and paste the above, really the hate here. If you don't know, Billy Graham was such an important character in wrestling as he was basically Hulk Hogan before Hulk Hogan. No way the Hulkster didn't borrow his mannerisms to become the force he did and the superstar was ahead of his time. Graham just understood what sports entertainment was and he ran with it. When he was done though, my word. He sued the company over alleged forced steroid use and even said he saw molestation behind the scenes it was serious, serious stuff. This is why when 10 years later he got the call to be in the WWE Hall of Fame, everybody was shocked. I need a documentary how they all got back on the same page because there was definitely a time when the bad blood was super real. I suppose Vince McMahon must have a sentimental side and look, Billy should be in the Hall of Fame. But good grief, this was potty. Number two, Eric Bischoff appears on WWE TV. I mean, how? Because seriously, it doesn't feel like that big a deal now because so much time has passed. But when Eric Bischoff walked out onto Raw in 2002 and hugged Vince McMahon, hell froze over. I think that's even what Jim Ross shouted. To really understand this too, we have to go back to WCW, where Eric would do things like give away the then WWE results and openly say his goal was to put McMahon out of business. He wasn't in this to be the best. He was in it for total control. There were other things, such as Bischoff challenging Vince to a fight on pay-per-view. And if you had told me this was even an idea in 1998, I'd have laughed at you. These two wanted to kill each other. As we know, though, Vince McMahon gets a kick out of being in control. So when the opportunity arose to employ Eric, he did. It was an inspired move as Bischoff was a great TV character and knew how to get heat. Some of the angles he was involved in were great. He got it. If you need a modern day equivalent, I suppose, it would be like Triple H welcoming Tony Khan to kick off SmackDown. And that's impossible, right? But who knows? Number one, Bret Hart returns to WWE. This was a moment in time. Because do not forget what Bret Hart had been through. Not only had the Montreal screw job happened in 1997, but two years later his brother Owen had passed away in the WWF ring and there was constant arguments about the Hitman's video library. It got so bad the WWE were going to release a DVD burying Hart, much in the same way they had the Ultimate Warrior. Although that kind of helped, because when Bret heard about this, he reached out to preserve his legacy. This obviously opened up the door for management to ask him if he wanted to properly return, but even when he was inducted into the Hall of Fame, he declined the WrestleMania waving party the next night he didn't want it. I suppose with all this madness weighing him down, the hitman woke up one day and realized it wasn't worth it. Because in 2010, not only did he walk back out onto Raw, he called out Shawn Michaels and shook his hand. Impossible. It also led to the Mania match against Vince McMahon, which was what it was. Doesn't need much chatter. But I don't think anybody has been more surprised by somebody coming back. It was genuine hate at one stage, but I guess time heals all wounds. Still though, I will always laugh about this. How the flub did it happen? Now, please do leave a comment below and let me know your favorite wrestling comebacks throughout the years. Like the video, share the video, and subscribe. And there's some other things that you can do. We have a website at whatculture.com. You can follow us on social media at whatculturewwe and at Miller316 And there's videos of plenty they want to entertain you. My name is Simon for What Culture. I am slowly losing my voice, which is not very good when you're doing voiceovers. 
But the world is sent to try us, and we gotta fight back and kick its ass.